Proverbs 14, verse 32, 34, it says it. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Fellow citizens of America, brothers and sisters, and the family of God, the flag of the United States of America is a symbol that stands for our beloved country. It's not unusual for people to get moved when they see the flag appearing and the band playing the Star Spangled Banner or some other song related to the military of our great country. So what's so great about America? Well, you think of all the tremendous freedoms that we have. We think of this beautiful God-made landscapes throughout our nation. Incredible. Our government doesn't tell us how to vote where to live. Our government says you can be elected to office and you have the right to vote, not only for but also against people you don't want in office. You, where else can you find such a generous outpouring of charitable gifts throughout the world as you do here in America? How happy we ought to be of how many people have sacrificed their, their, their lives for our freedom and for the freedom of people throughout the world. But how grateful we need to be to our God for blessing us as a country for 239 years and for blessing us as individuals. Individuals who should not take those freedoms for granted. But there are some cracks in our country that hold to the motto, in God we trust. That motto sounds good, but it doesn't always reflect the reality of what is happening here in, in America. And so as we celebrate and say, happy birthday, America, we seriously look at what is happening and what needs to happen here in America as we first of all take a look at the problems that face Americans as well as the solution that God gives to us. So, can you figure out what's wrong with America? Well, people are going to tell you, well, your taxes are too high. There's those pork barrel politics. You know, the cost of living, and you just, it's too much for the wages that we're getting. Oh yeah, and there's that racism bigotry that's going on. All those entitlement programs. Yeah, there's drug use, the soaring crime rates, more and more deadly sexually transmitted diseases. And the list goes on and on. But what it really comes down to is that there's a growing, a growing thirst for garbage. I'm not talking about the trash of the garbage men take out but a growing thirst for the garbage that's much worse than any rotten food. But that comes into your homes, through magazines, through television, through the computer, through smartphones and other technology. And where both adults and children are gobbling up that kind of garbage. Garbage which the government allows and permits instead of discarding it in the name of freedom of speech, freedom of choice. The eye syndrome is hurting us badly. You know, that's when we measure everything by what it means to me and what it gives me and how it pleases me. Long time ago, a man by the name of Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death, as he worked for the freedom of people here in America. Then it went to give me liberty, and perhaps our generation today would say just plain Give me. Give me what I want, and I really don't care what anybody else thinks. Everyone has a right to think and do as they please. Hmm. If anyone has trouble figuring out what's wrong with America, all you have to do is listen to God giving you one word of three letters. S-I-N. Sin is a disgrace to any people. But the news reminds us that 
Sin is not a disgrace for a lot of Americans. They couldn't care less about that. The general view is if the economy is okay, and if nothing jeopardizes my comfortable lifestyle, then sin in any form can be tolerated, rationalized, as simply my personal and private choice. And nobody should get bent out of shape because of it. That's my choice. I got a right to live the way I want. Well, that ad attitude leaves God entirely out of the picture, doesn't it? In God we trust is not the motto of most Americans because most Americans disregard what God says when it comes to marriage, what should be going on in a marriage, when it comes to human life in and out of the, the womb. Forty percent of the children born in America now are born out of wedlock. Over a million abortions are happening here in America every year. Suic assisted suicide, euthanasia, and gay marriages are now considered the milestones of social progress. Yeah, social progress here in America. Many people hope to give, hope to go to heaven, but they wouldn't think twice about trashing God and what he has to say about how you need to think and how you need to speak and how you need to live. God makes it very clear. clear. Sin is a disgrace to any people. And there's plenty of it goes around. And that includes you and me. It's so easy for us to condi be conditioned by the surroundings of our country and the culture of our country. And you hear things enough times and, and well, everybody's doing it. Everybody's thinking that way. Everybody's speaking that way. There's nothing wrong with there, is it? Things that you would have cringed about 10, 15, 20 years ago, and now it's just commonplace. And the devil is still there as that roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's going to keep coming at you with his temptations and try and rip you away. For parents with young girls, if you don't educate them what is appropriate, modest Christian dress and how they ought to speak and live, well then, Miley Cyrus and others like her will do the educating for you. If parents fight and run down each other, well, kids are going to lose respect for those in authority and God. And when they get married, that's the life they're going to be carrying through, that fighting and quarreling someday. And if you don't consistently train your children, discipline your children, and they do not know what that word no means, well, they have a right to do anything, right? And try that as you get older and older. It doesn't work. It may bring not only shame to you, but also to your children and your family. Times, there's so many times that we give in to temptations and when we do that, we're not living as the children of God that God wants us to be. And what kind of reflection are we, we making to the people of the world around us? Oh, you're a Christian. You're a child of God. Hmm. I don't know if I'd want to be like that. Yeah. We, more than anybody, as God's children, ought to know what's wrong with America and live the way that God wants us to live. We, more than anybody, should then know that we need to approach God with a broken and a contrite heart and ask for forgiveness of our sins and knowing that, that we will have that forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. How we need to pray that prayer that would remind us that we have a place that we can go to for a solution to the garbage and the sins in our lives. And we need to know that that needs to be passed on. You see, some people think that just more laws and stricter enforcement of more laws will make this a better America. Well, to some degree, that might be true. But millions of laws will not make people live God-pleasing lives. You can't change people that are so self-centered and having selfish hearts to those hearts that are selfless, giving as God has given to us, loving as God has loved us, forgiving as God has 
forgiven us with no strings attached. That only comes from God. And our God has a special solution, a special solution while sin is a disgrace to any people. He says, righteousness exalts a nation. God doesn't look at a nation's military strength, their natural resources, their wealth. He looks at their righteousness. You know what righteousness is? Right living according to God's standards. Righteousness is perfection. And God takes a world filled with sinful people and he says, I want you to be perfect. I want you, your righteousness to lift up not only yourself but the people around you. And God knows as well as you know that you're not perfect, you're not righteous through and through. But God didn't just leave us at that. He did something about that, about that righteousness. He did not abandon us when we were bankrupt of all that righteousness. But he asked his own son to humble himself, to come down, become a human being, to live the perfect life we could not live. And he did it, didn't he? He did not sin in his thoughts, his words, or his actions. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. He did not live that, that holy life for selfish personal advancement, but to have his sinless life be that life that we could not, to be our substitute, replacing our unrighteousness, our unholiness, with his righteousness, his holiness. But there's something else that had to be done too. Sin must be punished. In all of our sins, the time that we're conceived to the time that we die have to be punished. And this is where we're told so very clearly that he lowered himself to the deepest depths when he became obedient to death, even death on the cross, being forsaken, forsaken by his heavenly father, suffering the torments of hell for you and for me just so that we might never, ever be forsaken by God. Wow. Yes, the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. He was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, every last sin. What does that mean? That means that God has declared us not guilty of our sins. He has given us a free, totally free gift of righteousness. I've made you holy. I've made you righteous. He puts it that in a paragraph, in a sentence of the scripture. Jesus became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. Wow, what a tremendous gift. And you would think that a lot of people in America would get excited about that as they hear about that. But a large percent of Americans have absolutely no interest in anything Christian. America is rapidly becoming de-Christianized. Let me give you a few statistics. 85% of people born before 1945, that's most people 70 and older, 85% consider themselves Christians in some form or another. Only 57% of those born after 1980, that's 35 years of age and under, only 57 consider themselves now Christian. We have another statistic, the percentage of those who describe themselves as atheists, agnostics, and non-believers have grown to 23% of Americans. That's the America we're living in right now. If we want to see the future of America, perhaps we should take a look at, at Europe, but especially at Catholic, the Irish, where Catholic Ireland just voted in a landslide to legitimize same-sex marriages and where cathedrals and churches are often being turned into tourist attractions, museums, bars, and restaurants. So, what has that got to do with us? Do not forget the, the Lord your God who brought you into this good land. That's what's happening. A lot of people are forgetting 
what he has given to them or ascribe the blessing to him. But you, you, my children, what are you to do? You are to go and tell others about this God of love that has come into your life. You are to go and make disciples. How do you do that? You teach them my word and you baptize them. And I do the rest. So tell them what's in your heart that I passed on to you, that you're my child. Tell them about what sin does. Sin separates a person from a holy God. Tell them that God wants you to be in heaven. Tell them about Jesus who has taken away their sins and given them righteousness, holiness. But they can stand before the holy God someday and say, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. You, my children, are to be the salt of the earth, the light in this world, pointing people to Jesus. And as you do that, I'm going to work in hearts, even as I have worked in your heart, to bring you here today to hear God's word and to enable you to live God-pleasing lives. And when you have sinned, that you can come to my throne and be assured that your sins have been wiped away. And as you do that, you're going to find a nation that will be raised up, exalted. Righteousness exalts a nation. Say nothing, do nothing, care. Oh no, you need to reach out to people. They might be your neighbors, they might be your family. And they might even get mad at you. No, don't talk about politics or religion. You don't talk about the Savior. They won't be in heaven. Everything else, it doesn't matter at the end of life. Whether they're five years old, 25, 50, 70, or 100. This is the time to come to faith and be saved. You need to get the word out and let God do the rest. But what you also need to do is, if you hear it in that second reading, pray. Pray for everyone. Pray that God would work in the, the hearts of our our leaders, that they don't permit that permissiveness to keep going on, the garbage to be spread, but rather that hearts might be turned to believe in Jesus as their Savior, that they would love the Lord and live and think and speak the way the Lord would want them to do. Oh. That would help us be one nation under God as more people come to believe in God we trust. And what a birthday gift that would be for America, wouldn't it? And that can happen if we keep in mind the importance of the words he gives to us today. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Amen. <laughs>